Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good morning, guys. Morning. Sorry, I was having my own technical issues this morning. <clears throat> I just had to shut down because I was trying to share my screen with period one and everything was messed up. So I'm like, I'm just going to shut everything down. So I had trouble coming back up. So anyhow, I'm glad you're here. Good morning. Okay, we have a lot of things to cover today. And um, I, I want to get started here. A um, couple of announcements. Okay, first of all, where do I start? Okay, this right here is part of review two, and I'm going to take some questions on it, but you don't have any free days in this class. So this is a college preparatory course, and you're expected to do like 20 to 25 problems a day. If you don't do something one day, then you'll have to do 50 problems the next day. So I'm just letting you know that I'm being lenient right now. Um, I'm trying to get everybody going here. Um, I'm being patient, but um, yeah, you, you have to do work every, even though we meet only three days a week, I mean, you have to do work every day. And if you don't, it's gonna pile up. So for example, today, I'm gonna talk about the new assignment, P1. And um, we're gonna do one through 101 odd. So that's <clears throat> 50, 51 problems. So I'm gonna be talking about that today. So if you didn't do this last night, at least this, this is due Sunday, right? If you didn't do this last night, then I'm already talking about the next lesson and you're already behind. So just make sure you're doing work every day. Um, that's what's expected of you. We're not doing the work three days a week. We're meeting three days a week. You're doing work every day. All right. So let me talk about the review first. Um, I'm going to take questions on this. I'm, I'm not going to spend, I'm only going to take a few questions. Um, I'm not going to spend all day on this um, because we have other things to do. So just know that the calculator, I do not want you putting the problems in the calculator. Um, the only time you're going to use the calculator is if you need to multiply something or if you need to add something, that's when you're going to use the calculator. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, I used to coach softball at Cal State San Bernardino, and I used to require that my student athletes come to study hall once or twice a week. And um, my student athletes were all like, coach, can you help me with my math? So the first thing they would do, they would bring me the calculator and go, well, you know, see, I didn't get the right answer. And I'm like, yeah, because you didn't put it in the calculator correctly. So um, we're not using a calculator to do any, we're not working problems on the calculator. So all we're doing right now is we're using the calculator to add, subtract, multiply, divide, but we're not, we're not putting the problems in the calculator. Um, we're doing everything by hand because when you have really tough problems, you're not going to be able to do them by hand if you're not practicing now. Okay, so you guys didn't tell me that I didn't put the answers for the dot to dot that on in Google Classroom. So I didn't give you the answers. So how are you supposed to make corrections if you don't know the answers? So. I put that, I send out a remind last night. I told you guys, those answers are in Google Classroom. Make sure that you grade your paper so you can make corrections. 
See, the old saying, practice makes perfect, that's not true, that's a lie. Perfect practice makes perfect. So if you, if you don't grade your paper, and you don't make corrections, then you're not gonna know if you did them right, and you, you don't know if you're gonna get them right on the test. So I always give the answers. Once in a while I'll say, you know, we've done a bunch of these, I'm not giving the answers on this, this is just practice, but the majority of the time I will give you the answers because you have to grade your paper to assess if you understood what I taught or not. Okay, so. Couple things here. Can you see me? If you don't know how to put in six to the fifth on the calculator, what you do is you hit a carrot key. It's called a carrot, and it's on the right side of the calculator. So it's the black key. So if you need to put a power in, um, you're going to use the carrot key. And so when you put this in, I'll just tell you, six to the power of five, or six carat five, is seven, 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 six. So when I was making up the key for this crossword puzzle, I was thinking of things that you might be having trouble with. All right, so for now, I want to take any questions that you might have on this. Now, obviously, if you didn't do it, you don't have any questions, and it's just a big waste of time. So hopefully you did this. There's only 24 problems. You should have done this last night. Anybody have any questions about this? Anybody want me to work a problem? Can you this work number alone, eight? Yeah, this, these answers in Google Classroom, make sure you grade your paper. This is going to be due on Sunday night. Number eight? Yeah, please. That's four times three. See, see how it looks like a decimal? That's why we don't like dots. Okay. When you have a division bar like that, you treat the bottom, the top and the bottom as two separate problems, but you work it simultaneously. That means at the same time. So the top is just 12 squared. And the bottom is 14 minus 2, which is 12. Over here, that's in parentheses. So that would be 12 to the first power. My words wet. So this turns out to be 144 over 12. And let me just tell you this, when you multiply fractions, you can cross cancel. So you don't have to do it that way, but that would be the most efficient way. The answer is 144. So basically you let the problem filter out, you work the top, you work them as separate problems, but you carry it down to keep the equal sign. These are complete steps. Like I said yesterday, make sure you're not doing anything too different from what I'm, I'm doing. Make sure you're showing complete steps, complete work. Okay, I can work another one. Last call. Anybody else want me to work a problem? Nope. Okay, that's your loss. Just remember that stay on top of things. Make sure you're doing assign it. 
um, because when you when you actually go to do this, you're going to have questions, but you failed to ask me today, so um, that's your loss. All right, so last call. Anybody want to ask me a question about this? All right. What I'm going to do right now is we're going to go over registration for your online account for my math lab. That's why I'm sitting down. And um, I'm going to basically just show you the book and some of the features of the book um, that you're going to like. Before we do that, I want to go into um, Google Classroom. So bear with me just a second. All right, so I'm gonna go into my Google Classroom so I can show you what I put in here. I am sharing, right? Okay, this is period two. And this is where I am right here, the math registration information. Can somebody unmute yourself and just tell me, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm just gonna edit this so you can see it clearly. Okay, there are two sets of directions. There's number one, for students who went and got your sheet of paper at the high school with your access code, those directions are for you. Two are for the students who did not go to the school and you're gonna be using a universal passcode. All right, so let's talk about, the, let, let me talk to the people who went to the, went to Colton High School and got a sheet of paper. If you went to Colton High School and picked up your online access code, you're just gonna follow the directions on the sheet. Make sure you write down all the information so you can keep it in the handout section of your notebook. In addition to that, what you guys are gonna do, those of you who went and got the sheet at Colton High School, you guys are gonna fill out this Google form down here. So let me show you. This Google form looks like this. And what it has, it's gonna have your username and password. And the reason why is because if you lose your login information, the publisher and no one else has record of it. So what I did is I made up this Google form so I can keep track of your information in case you forget your password, or your login information, and we have it. Because if basically, if you mess it up, we're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to get into your account because nobody has a record of your password. All right, so that's for the people who went to school to get the paper. You're just gonna follow the directions on the paper and you're gonna fill out this Google form down here so I can keep track of your login information. All right, now, for the people, the other half of the people that did not go to Colton High School to get your online access code, you're gonna look at number two. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch this slide presentation and you're gonna have a universal code, which is this right here. So it's really long code. You're gonna also fill out a Google form, but it will be inside the presentation. And we're gonna go through the presentation in a minute for everyone. So notice what I wrote down here. 
I said, at any time you forget your login information, do not select forget password online because you will be contacting the publisher and the Colton Joint Unified School District will block your access if the publisher responds back. So you cannot get your login information or password from the publisher. If you forget your login information, you're going to send Ms. Birch an email or remind, and I can help you retrieve it as long as you filled out the Google form that I'm talking about. All right, this down here is just for the course ID. It's Birch 73864. Um, when it asks for the course ID, um, that's what you're going to use. When it asks for the universal code, this is what you're going to use up here. Okay, now. Um, I want to show you this Google slide presentation for all of those who are going to have a universal code. Everyone else, just bear with me because this won't hurt you to see what this looks like. So this is for everyone who did not go to Colton High School to get your access code. So step one, you're going to go to www.mymathlabforschool.com. See the arrow? You're going to register as a student. You're going to, this is where you enter the course ID. That's the one that's Birch, whatever I said it was. You're going to hit create. All right, now, this is a note. You're going to follow these guidelines. So you're going to fill in this information and notice what this says. Pearson does not keep password login information. That's the, that's the uh, publisher. Please record in the Google form below. This way, log information, login information could be stored safely. So you would click here and the Google form will come up for you guys. Now, what you're going to do for your username is you're going to use your Colton Joint Unified School District school email. Do not use your personal email. For the password, you're going to use CHS Zangle password at. For example, CHS, your Zangle password, and at. Step five, you're going to enter the universal access code. That was that really long code that I gave you, it's down here at the bottom. Can you guys see this? I got something in my way here. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Darn it. M-M-L-H-S-O-T-R-A-I-L-R-I-S-E-N-S-W-E-E-T-Q-U-A-S-H-S-Y. That's your universal access code. You may receive an email confirmation saying that you're enrolled in the course. You're going to click on the tile for your teacher's math course, and that's how you're going to enter. And this, all this right here is just, this is just different things that you can access. We're going to go through some of this today to show you the, your online textbook. You can watch this video if you're still confused. You just click on the video to watch it. And then finally, if you want an eText app, this is new, you can get the app on your phone. In case you need to look at it while you're at the beach or something. So that is the slide presentation. And that is for all of you who did not go to school to get the um, to get a personal code, you're using a universal access code. All right. Does anybody want to ask me any questions about registration? If you picked up your code, you're using this. If you did not pick up a code, you're using this and watching the slide presentation. All right, what I wanna do now is I want to, um, I want to look at your textbook online. So I'm still sharing my screen um, this textbook is more than just a textbook. This textbook is interactive. And that means that 
You can have math teachers teach you. You can see a video. Um, you can work problems and it's gonna grade your problems. It's very powerful. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you this. I'm gonna sign in with my account. You, just, you guys just follow along and watch please this presentation. Now, last period, this was lagging a lot, so I'm hoping that it's not going to. Um, okay, so th this is my course down here. See it right here? This is my course ID, Birch 73864. So this is how you would enter. So you just click on it. Just using my account right now. And I wanna look at some things in your textbook with you. So here is your e-text right here. So you click on e-text. and you open your textbook. It is lagging a lot because of, I think, you know, doing the WebEx and, and everybody here. Um, okay, so here's your book and let me grab it real quick. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you is, I'm gonna be teaching a, a, a prerequisite section. Um, I'm not supposed to be teaching it, but I am gonna teach it because it will make things run a lot smoother and you won't be totally lost. The prerequisite section is Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 stuff. So if I go up here to this little box and I put three, here's your table of contents. And here's the prerequisite section. So these are fundamental concepts of Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So like I said, I'm not supposed to be teaching this, but I want to go through this. And I will be giving exams on this just to make sure that you have the prerequisites for the pre-cal class. So um, in, this, in these sections, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of teaching unless you want me to. So for example, in a minute, we're going to look at P1, and you're going to see that there's 10 objectives. Okay, um, I don't have time to teach 10 objectives, so you're gonna have to let me know which ones you want me to teach, but we're gonna be evaluating expressions. We're gonna be looking at intersection and union. We're gonna be looking at sets of numbers. We're gonna be looking at properties. We're gonna be looking at absolute value. Okay, all right, so what I wanna do is I wanna go to that section and um, I wanna go to page two. So I'm gonna go back up here and I'm going to and you guys would do the same in your book. I'm gonna go to page two. Here's the prerequisite section. So this is gonna be the next assignment. It's gonna be um, assignment P1. And these are all the objectives. See how there's 10 of them? Now, let me show you how cool your book is. So as you go through your book, you're looking at your book. Um, I'm gonna go to the next page by going over here to the right arrow. I'm gonna go to page four. And you see these globes? These globes do things. So see this globe right here? This is gonna be an animation and I'm gonna click on it so you can see it. So like I said, this is more than a book. So they're gonna do this problem for you. So let's just listen in and see what they're gonna say. So we have the product of three and negative one, which is negative three, and the product of four and negative 
Okay, so their notation wasn't exactly right, and they're not doing things exactly the way we would do them, but you get the point that you can get help if you need help um, right in your text. So that was the first globe. So let's look at the second globe. It says you try it. Now, last period, this was a disaster because it took so long to load. But let's see, let's see what we get this time and see if I can get it to come up. Looks like it's trying to come up. Like I said, you're not going to have this lag, um, just one on one with the ebook. Um, I'm having this problem because I'm trying to share my screen. I got meetings. I got a bunch of people. Okay, so look at this. Now, this problem is going to look like something on your exam. So, what you would do is you put five in and you substitute in and you work this on a sheet of paper. In fact, can you guys do this on your paper right now uh, in your notes? So, I want you to write down this expression and substitute five in and work the problem vertically and tell me what I should put in this box. Okay, so once again, write down this problem in your notes, substitute five in for X, work the problem vertically and circle your answer and tell me what you get. Okay, did anybody get an answer? It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong right now. Somebody give me an answer, please. I got 194. Okay, now watch yeah, what happens. Okay, okay, hold on. When I put in 194, check this out. I'm going to have it check it. So if I can get my, I have my screen in the way, hold on. So you check your answer down here and we'll see if we're right. It's fantastic. We got it right. Now here's the cool part. If you get it wrong, it tells you what you did wrong and you get a chance to do it again. Isn't that cool? So not only do you have, you have these problems that are going to look like your exams, but it grades it for you so you can tell right away if you did it right or not. So that's you try it. And then the third globe is a video. So watch this one. Cool stuff, right? So you have all these different helps at your disposal. Now, when I was in school, my textbook was not like this at all. Okay. Um, you guys are lucky because your textbook is, it's highly powerful and um, you're able to get help. You're able to watch videos. You're able to um, try things out and it will grade it for you. So let me get back on the page again.
Okay, so these are the different pages in this. There's a lot of different pages to help you. I think I'm on too far. Okay, so let me go back. So you can click on those globes to get help, but I want to show you the assignment. So the uh, this is the exercise set P1. And now check this out. So this is the assignment. And remember, I'm going to assign, there's 101 problems on these different sections. Show you. So it goes all the way up to 101 right here, practice plus. And see all these globes? You're never going to believe this. But when you click on one of these globes, watch this. It gives you problems like the exam. So if you click on this, this problem looks like exactly like a problem on the exam. So here we go. Determine whether the statement is true or false. Negative eight is greater than or equal to negative five. So that is actually a false statement. So if I hit false and I check my answer, it should tell me, um, yeah, you're right, nice work. Now, you can pick another problem if you want. So I'm gonna pick a similar question to practice for the test. And now I'm gonna pick the wrong answer. So negative one is less than negative eight. Okay, that is false. But I'm gonna pick true. So when I pick true, It'll say, um, no, you answered true. The correct answer is false because negative eight is to the left of negative one on the number line. This negative eight is less than negative one. So see how you can pick a similar question to get it right? So this is a very powerful, powerful tool. And so basically what I'm saying is, by hitting all these globes, you can practice for the exam and you could get 100% on the exam by clicking on all these globes. So that's how you're gonna study for an online exam. Okay, now, here's what you're gonna do. Pay attention and follow directions. You're gonna be going into your teams. So you're gonna go into your math wizard teams. What you're gonna do is as a group, you're gonna go through each one of these sections. You're not working problems. All you're doing is looking at each section and going, okay, everybody, do you know how to do these? Yes, everybody knows how to do it. So go to the next section. This one's just a formula. So you may not wanna spend any time on that. Does everybody remember intersections? Nobody remembers that. So that might be something you wanna ask me to teach. Let's go over here, going through all these. Absolute value. Maybe you understand, abs well, let's go back. Sets of numbers. Do you guys remember natural numbers, whole numbers, integers? That might be something you wanna look up. Um, but you're gonna go through each section and talk it out in your group. Yeah, we get this, or somebody explain, you know, how to do absolute value if you don't remember that absolute value is distance. After you go through all these sections as a group, then you're going to start on this assignment, P1. And um, you're going to do the odds because that's what I'm going to assign. I'm going to be signing one through 101 odd. And you can get started on the assignment once you talk about this. Um, the reason why you're talking about it is because you might want me to teach something. All right. So you might want me to teach one of these sections. You're going to let me know. All right, does anybody have any questions before I set you free to work in the math wizard teams? When's all this gonna be due? Um, this assignment is, I don't have a due date on it yet, but it's probably gonna be due on Monday night. All right, thank you. So that's why I'm saying get started. You know, you should be working th this assignment, um, the assignment with the crossword puzzle, that's due on Sunday night but you're still, you're still working today and tomorrow and you should be able to do, and Monday, and you should be able to do um, one through 101 odd. 
Maybe not. You know, we'll have to see. Today's Thursday, so you might not be ready for Monday, so I might have to change that day because I don't, I don't know. See, here's the deal. I don't know if all of you understand this perfectly. If all of you do not understand this perfectly, then I might have to extend the assignment so I can explain some of these things. So I have no idea where you're at. Supposedly, you're supposed to know all this stuff. I highly doubt it um, that you know all this stuff. So uh, that's, why I'm not a, that's why I'm not putting a due date on the assignment right now. Because I have no idea what you know and what you don't know. All right? All right. So I will see you later. Keep your WebEx tab open. I want you to go into your Teams and look at these different sections and discuss them. See if you understand them or not. If somebody understands it, explain it. If none of you understand it, you want to make a note of it so you can ask me to teach it. And we will get back together toward the end of class. All right. Okay. So I'll see you in your, in your uh, wizard teams. Okay. All right. So go to your, go to Google classroom, go to your wizard teams, and I'll see you in those.